Your Excellency and distinguished guests. When I think of World War I, I think of Anzac Day, war medals, Grandad's good old yarns. I think of words like patriotism, valour, selflessness. I see it as something symbolic that happened for our good, like Jesus dying on the cross. And in that same way, I find it hard to see it as something as more than just a symbol. I am so far removed from the suffering and terror of those young men, and my generation as a whole struggle to relate. For most 17-year-olds, World War I is a war that took place 100 years ago, 83 years before they were born. It's that war their teachers do a wee spiel about before Anzac Day. It's that war that involved battles at Passchendaele, Gallipoli and others too. It just happened so incredibly long ago. And as time has passed, it has seemed to become less and less relevant to people of my age. Too many of us feel no need to know or care about it. Yet 100,000 New Zealand men served overseas in World War I. 41,000 were wounded, and 18,000 never made it home to their loved ones. If I had been born in another time, those men could have been my brothers. My brother, who is practically engaged, or my other brother, who hasn't even finished school yet. Those men could have been the boys in my class, the boys who still find it funny to joke around, the boys who still wind up the relief teacher. It's hard to imagine those young men giving up their lives for their country. It's hard to imagine that men as young as them were sent off to fight for the liberty of New Zealand and the empire. But that's the reality of it, if they'd been born in 1897 instead of 1997. Too many young New Zealand men died in World War I. 18,000 men who were sent off to die by the old men at Allied Command. Young men who had hopes and dreams, just like I do. Just like my brothers or the boys in my class do. Many are recognised as heroes that we may have heard of, like Sergeant Dave Gulliher, who was one of the original All Blacks, or Brigadier Reginald Miles, who was awarded a Distinguished Service Order. But the vast majority were just ordinary men. Tony Fagan was a school teacher in Northland when the war broke out. He went to Auckland to join up. He said he went because he was looking for adventure. Although he was one of the lucky ones who made it home, there were images he could never erase from his mind, like the lifeless bodies covered in blood, left lying in the scrub without even a proper burial, without even their families back home knowing what had happened to them. And there were so many more men like Tony Fagan. Men who just wanted to see a bit of the world, to have an adventure. In war, these men were classed as ordinary. Ordinary in the sense that they were so brave in the face of death and carnage. Because that was the new ordinary for our boys. Our boys were expected to behave extraordinarily. And in certain circumstances, ordinary men can be truly extraordinary. I should know more about World War I, not only because it's part of our nation's history, but also our families. It was our ancestors, our Otato Tipuno, who came home to the country they had been fighting for, scarred forever, or simply didn't return home at all. We have a duty to know, 
because our boys were let down, let down by the old men in suits to whom the number 18,000 meant little more than if it had appeared on an invoice, part of the cost of war. As George S. McGovern said, I'm fed up to the ears with old men dreaming up wars for young men to die in. We can never let these deaths pass us by. The sanctity of life is what makes us all human. And if we let these deaths slip by, what does that make us? We all have to care because they were ours. I have to care because they could have been my brothers. They could have been my classmates. We can never forget these hardships, or we run the risk of repeating them. As Edmund Burke said, those who don't know history are doomed to repeat it. And we cannot condemn ours and future generations to the same fate as our brave Anzac boys. It is good to go to the Anzac parades, to see war medals, to hear granddad's stories. But above all else, we must not forget. <laughs>